Hello everyone, Gainer here from HDB Upgrading Strategies and welcome back live. Now today is my episode 4. So what is episode 4 actually about, right? Uh, and today, we will, we will be talking about this topic, right? Examples of a bad property investment, right? So in this video, I will actually show you guys about some of the examples of uh, resale condos, right? And some of the transactions right uh, and, and 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 these transactions probably i will show show to you guys about those unprofitable transactions and from then on we will be able to analyze together and figure out um you know uh see whether are there any similarities you know how we can learn from this as well right once again for those people coming in right today what am i talking about today i'll be talking about this examples of a bad property investment Okay, so I, I think this is something that is uh, really, really, very, um, um, very, very something that I think a lot of people will be very concerned of. Why? Because at the end of the day, I know that there are many HDB upgraders, right? And this and, and you guys will probably look into, you know, buying a resale property or even buying a bigger HDB because uh, these are very common practice, right? So I, I, I think this will be something very interesting for you guys. And from then on, you'll be able to see, you know, uh, whether would you be buying something that is uh, uh, valuable or will you be buying something that, you know, things that you, you, may, you may probably probably bought a, you know, uh, a bad property investment as well, right? So, okay. So once again, I know you guys are coming in. Uh, once again, I'll be talking about this right okay now okay so i just want to ask you a very very <laughs> I, I mean i mean this question i just want to ask you guys since we are talking about this topic does anyone knows you know what is a property i mean sorry what is a bad property investment does anyone knows right probably you guys can you know just give me some uh tinkle you know anyone Okay, so I think that's this is a pretty simple question, right? A bad property, you know, investment is something that probably you have, you know, made a bad purchase and probably you don't make money out of it, probably you even make losses, right? So I think this is something that you guys really have to take note, right? So in fact, I already prepared three resale condominiums, right? And this is really right here on my table, right? I prepared this. Now, this is one of the condominium which is at um, Passeries. Now the condominium is actually Livia, right? Any of you guys staying in Passeries <laughs> that you're probably looking to upgrade, right? So this is Livia, right? I already extracted the transactions, right? This is Livia condominium. Uh, I think you guys can see Livia, right? I will actually stream through to this, uh, this, this category, which is the um, unprofitable transactions. Can you guys see? If you guys can see, you probably can give me a thumb, thumbs up, right? Unprofitable transactions, right? Can you guys see? Right? So I just want to show to you guys this very important, this few interesting data. Now, uh, if you guys can see, this is actually at December 2018. And you can see that this person actually bought on uh, here, 2014 right and actually sold in 2018 right in fact he actually made a loss of if you can see 280,000 if I'm not wrong can you guys see right and even the the next transaction was actually a loss of 220,000 right the person bought in 2011 right and actually sold in sorry my orientation probably yeah and sold in 2018 as well both are in recent December transactions, right? If you can really see, these are the losses that the transactions have actually done, right? These are the losses, right? Can you guys see? This is also another one more, minus 200,000. In fact, it was bought in 2013, right? And and it was sold in 17. Can you see 17? Now, this property that I'm showing to you is actually Livia, right? Uh, this is in Passeries. Now I'm showing to you another area, which is 
Woodlands? Anyone staying in Woodlands? <laughs> okay, so you can see Woodlands, this is a project called North Oaks. In fact, I actually extracted the past 10 years transaction to show to you guys that, uh, I mean, if let's say, you know, uh, if you guys or, or any one of you have been staying for, you know, bought a property and have been staying for 10 years, so at least you know whether does it make money or probably, you know, you, you don't even actually make some money at all. So this is North Oaks for the past 10 years. And I showed, I quickly zoomed down to this, which is, this is also unprofitable transactions. Can you guys see? Right, I just want to let you guys see that so that you can really see very carefully. So first thing first, sorry, eh? first thing first, let's zoom down. Negative 200,000, negative 100,000. So actually where it was bought, it was bought in 2012, right? But it was sold in, sorry, my orientation probably is a little bit, yeah. In 2017 and in 2018. Right, and the losses is actually 200,000 and also 100,000. Now, this is also an example. People probably made losses. Now, why is this so? Now, I, I go, let me go through with you another one more. This is, now in fact, this is in Jurong and this project I'm going to share with you has a fantastic location. Really fantastic. It's actually just above the Jurong East MRT station and the project is called Sentries, right? So here, Sentries. And it was actually for, I also extracted the data based on past 10 years. Now, so we, we zoom down into the information whereby saying unprofitable transactions. Now, this is the unprofitable transactions. Now, you can see, right? And, and, and you can see that even if people who bought at the fantastic location, right? And, and the losses was actually minus how much? Minus 280,000 and minus 150,000. Can you see? Right, and when was it bought? It's a, it was actually bought in 2011 and 2013, right? And it was sold in 2017, right? 2017. Now, uh, these are the three projects that I'm sharing with you guys that probably you know some of the people actually make losses. Now, one thing I just have to clarify now, uh, I'm not saying that these three projects, you know, just put a disclaimer, right. I'm not saying that these three projects, you know, if you guys are looking to purchase, uh, I'm not saying that you cannot buy the project, right? I'm just extracting some of the transactions that people make losses and trying to gather some of the similarities so that you guys will probably know, right? Every project probably they'll also have some people who make losses as well. It's just that coincidentally, I'm getting these three projects so that, you know, just based on our study here, and just want to share with you guys, especially for this live video, so that you have a good understanding as well. Now, I already showed you this tree, these three transactions. Now, have anyone actually noticed a similarity? Right? Have anyone actually noticed a similarity? Right? Now, actually, if you guys have seen, right, I'm going to share with you guys again. Now, if you guys really notice and see this, carefully now you will notice that a lot of people who bought in 2011 and 2012 and 2013 and they sold their properties in 2017 and even 2018 they actually in fact made some losses now why is this so now in fact if you really look at it right uh i probably i'll just show to you this this is a historical chart for probably centuries right and i want to share with you this now this is centuries Right, if you really can see, this is the curve. Now, this is the year, right? If can you guys see this is the year? Now you can really see that the property actually the market picks up two zero zero nine two zero one zero one 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 two one three, and then to one four one five it slowly goes down, right? Now why is this so? Now this is in two zero one three. Now if you guys really know the market well, uh, that was when the gov the government actually. You know, they introduces all the cooling measures and that's why there is a dip, right? So we can see that for the past 10 years, this is the, 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 the current trend going upwards to 2013 and going downwards, right? Now, as you can see from the three projects that I showed to you guys, now timing is actually one of the very, very important factor as well, right? Timing is actually one of the important factor. And I want to share with you something very interesting as well. Right now, 
I've showed to you are the three resale transactions. So what what why people probably some of them make losses in resale transactions? I'll share with you this very interesting study. Now, uh, probably I can say that you know some of the some of the three tr uh, projects, right? People actually bought the early buyer early. They probably bought at a very very low price, right? So the, 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 the property has been in the market maybe 10, 15 years, right? So we have to agree that they bought at this at a very low price, right? And as market moves upwards, especially during the cooling measure, it actually went all the way upwards, right? And then when the government introduces the cooling measures, it, start the, it slowly starts to go down, right? Now, why is this so? Now, you can see that these are the people who bought with probably 2011, 2012, and 2013. 2013. And then the prices drop. Now, if you buy here, and you are selling in this, 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 this area, now you will see that you probably bought here and you sold it here. And why is this so? The people who bought here at a very low price, when the market goes up and comes down here, the biggest question is that, these people has a huge gap. These people has a huge profit gap. Now, meaning to say, even when the market goes downward, even if the market goes downward, these people, if you can see, can choose to sell and yet make profit. However, if you bought a property at this area, right, you will probably make losses at this because the gap is really not a lot whereas versus than these people who probably bought at the early stage now at this point of time i'm not saying that you guys have to buy new launches right because i think it's also have to be very careful because i think new launches right um the pricing today i think quite a lot of people are also looking at it and probably should i enter or should i not right i think at the end of the day we really have to analyze and study whether that will be a good price for you guys to enter as well, right? I think this is something really very important. That's why I'm showing you this chart. The early people, because we have to accept the fact that those people who bought it very early, right, they have already gained this, this early pricing. Whereas when the market, no matter how it goes, probably they already might have a gap, right? And if you are buying or you are HDB, you know, upgrader and you are probably selling your HDB and buying a resale property, you probably might enter into this stage because the fact that you may not be able to wait for the new property to, to, to you know, to come because you want an immediate stay. That's why you probably will buy at this stage, right? Whereby people has already earned this profit margin. Now this, I would say, will be a safety zone for them, but it's not a safety zone for you. Right, so if you really understand where I'm coming from. So this is something that I think you probably should look at it, right? And probably should study, especially when you guys, you know, some of you guys probably might want to upgrade now and look for a project or property or upgrade, you know, or even worse, probably I think some of you might want to buy just another resale HDB. And this is something I think is important for you guys to take note as well, right? So what are the recommendations that I want to, you know, let you guys know? Now, first of all, I think you really, really need to know whether you're buying for a stay or for investment. Why is this so? Because if you're buying for stay, you probably can hold much longer. But if you're buying for investment, the investment value is important. So these two factors, you know, I always tell my clients, they always want to find a balance. You know, a lot of people will always tell me, Gainer, I want to buy for my stay. But yet, I also want to buy for investment, right? I, I believe that this is true to everyone. Now, the importance is we are trying to strike a balance as well because if you're buying for own stay, there are many factors. If you're buying for investment, that is really what you're looking for, capital growth. Then own stay may not be, you know, the factor may not be inside. But yet, a lot of people, they want to strike a balance, right? Which is, I understand it's important. That's why I think, you know, we really have to be careful and you really, really need to know your objective, your your, your intention, if whether you're buying for, for stay or for investment. And then from then on, we can draw or probably strike a balance, right? Second thing from this, this few examples that I want to share with you guys is timing. Now, buying a property, the timing is extremely important. Now, selling of the property, the timing is also important as well. So these two are 
you know the timing is something that I think you guys really have to 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 really study. Now, as for today, right? I think um, you guys probably have to analyze whether you know the price is something that is is, is something that you guys should enter, right? So I think this is important timing because people probably make money because they bought at the right timing. They sold at the when the market is good, right? Whereas you know those examples that I've shared with you guys, some of the transactions the owner actually bought at the wrong timing because I shared. They actually bought in this 2011 or 12. And at the end of the day, they probably need to sell the place. Uh, why? Probably there are many factors. And they have to sell at their price because those people at the early stage probably already could have sold here. So when they sold it here, the transaction has already been done. And valuation, you know, the price valuation has been done. So they have no choice but has to follow the market. So this is something very important, timing as well. Now, the very last thing I want to share with you guys, which I think is the finances. Now, why finances? To me, finances is something that is extremely important. Now, if you plan your finances well, you really look into your finances well, then you are able to know how long you can hold your property. Right? This is extremely important. Why? Because if the market, you know, today if I'm selling my HDB and buying a private property, now, and I know that probably if deep down you think that your finances is not strong enough. So meaning to say, when there is a time that you probably might not be able to afford the money installment, that is where you will probably think about selling. And when the day you thought you think about selling, you can only depend on the property market during that. So if the market is bad, you probably has to succumb to that situation. However, if you are able, if your finances, you plan it right, you plan it good enough, and you know that probably market may not be that well at the point of time for you to sell. So you are able to type through this time as well. So timing, sorry. So finances is extremely important. So once again, I just want to repeat these three important fact, uh, recommendations that, you know, if you guys probably want to upgrade, sell your HDB and buy a private property or condominium, you know, first of all, you need to know your intention. What, why are you buying? Are you buying for stay? or you're buying for investment, or you're trying to strike a balance in between, you know, and, 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 and deep down, I think the intention is important, right? Second, of course, is the timing, right? Uh, timing is important. Like if you want to buy at this time, you probably need to analyze and know whether the price that you're buying is right, right? I, I really see some of my friends, they are looking. Uh, I see my good friend, Steven, right? Thanks, because I know I help you to buy at the timing that is right. <laughs> You are one of the early buyers, right? If you know what I'm saying, right? So timing is extremely important, right? And lastly, finances. You really have to plan your finances well, meaning to say, right, you need to know how long you can hold the property, how long you can hold the private property investment, right? So I hope this 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 short video, this short live video probably will give you a thinker. At least you will know what are the examples of some bad property investment. And at the end of the day, you know, what are the stuff that you probably have to look out and watch out for, right? If, if probably, you know, if you guys have any questions, right, feel free, just PM me or whatsoever, right? And, and probably I'll be there and I'll be able to answer your questions, right? If you guys don't have any questions right now, and I will probably end this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a good night. Thank you.